you begin to think to yourself, like, I can't physically keep doing this. I literally remember myself in my kitchen, like, like at that getting to that breaking point of like, I can't keep doing this anymore. So anyway, I wanted to reach out, talk to you, and I wanted to network. Caleb said it would be a good idea to talk to you um, because he even told me when I get there to reach out to him. Um, But I wanted to, I wanted to just, you know, to kind of network and talk to you and obviously be respectful because I know you and I talked and you kind of want to get in that neighborhood as well. Does that make sense, ma'am? Am I right? Do it. I I don't want to be wrong. I think you're going to a solid market. There is room for everybody here to grow. I'm not a, you know, I don't have the mindset of scarcity. I think there's a, I have a mindset of abundance and there's only more houses being built. I'm telling you in the spring rush, the phones are ringing off the hook so much. Nobody can answer all the calls. I think it's awesome. I think, I think you have a great opportunity here. Um, I don't think you're stepping on anybody's toes. Um, There's other competitors in our market that I literally mentor. There's a a handful of them literally. And uh, they look up to me and I help them out. Um, yeah, and I'll be honest good. with you. I would like for you to do that. I, I mean, I'd be willing to pay you. I mean, you don't have to pay me. Uh, we we do like a monthly mastermind group uh, every second Saturday. You could jump in, ask questions. Obviously, right now we're doing thirty minute coaching calls for free right now, um, which is you know what we're doing now. But yeah, I mean, obviously Caleb is a, is a wealth of resource as well. You know, so you can always reach out to him and ask questions. But yeah, I mean, we're we're all local here. So uh, we used to do it actually in person, the mastermind meeting well, where we would host it at the that. house. I, I hate that y'all don't do that anymore. <laughs> we we had probably a group of like 10 or 12 people, but we found that like not a lot of them were showing up. And it's like, you know, I, I don't, yeah, it just got to the point where I'm like, I could probably be doing something better with my time instead of trying to help people that maybe don't want to be here. You know, yeah, um, and, I, I, and I, I, I think I think they did want to be there. They weren't just like prioritizing it, you know. And so um, we just found that we could probably reach more people just like you found us like on YouTube and everything. And, um, you know, I think we can reach and help more people. My personal mission is to, like develop to develop leaders in the lawn care industry. And, um, you know, so we can do that. There's a very high leverage with the media side. So that's why we kind of took it more virtually. No, I respect that. And it, it obviously makes makes more sense you can't reach more people i was the internet changed everything in Mm -hmm. 2000 when it really took off 99 2000 it absolutely changed everything and it's like the ai right now it's about to change it's about to change everything again let me ask you obviously you do extremely well i know you've been in the business four years now this is actually my technically my second full season obviously but first full season in a new market so it's obviously it's going to be a little bit different there. Um, I'm in the process of figuring out how to, the hardest part is I don't want to, I don't want to start a new company. I have built up a pretty good um, uh, business on Google, my business. I've got like 15, 16, five-star reviews. I've got a ton of pictures of, I've got a, a solid Facebook page a solid Instagram page and a solid website. Now it's not as good as your website. I need to take it to a different level. I know um, Galeb, he pays, he does the Mike Andy's $400 a month. That's pretty, that's pretty steep. I don't know if I'm ready for that right now. Um, Cause I agree with your philosophy. You didn't really agree with it. You went a different route, which um, I liked your route, but that's the hardest part is obviously I've got to have a, some kind of, like I'm in the process of getting an apartment in North Frisco, Prosper area. And as soon as I have that, it's a two bedroom, two bath with a, a garage. I'm going to make that my office. And I learned from um, several different guys, but a guy that you follow, uh, uh, Grant Cardone, I can write, the, I make one bedroom my office. I can write that off and help my taxes, if that makes sense. So I have to have that to use that to switch over my address with Google My Business. So I want to switch the business over. I think that's smarter than starting a brand new business. Would you agree since I've already got it grounded? I would agree. You just change the name, get on the website, change the service area to, yep. you know, the new local market, change the uh, address on Google My Business. Yeah. Change my Facebook uh, name and all that good stuff. I'm going to be coming in hot. Like I said, I'm trying to do what I can to market 
without being there, which is hard to do. It's hard to market an area you're not in unless you spend a ton of money for Google business ads. Um, I've followed you about that, man. They're so expensive. And if you don't do it right, you can throw a lot of money down the drain. You can always do EDDM. Flyers. It's expensive too. I've done it around here. Uh, I spent $600 on two big subdivisions and I got four calls. Yeah. The thing with that is you got to time it right, obviously. And you got to put enough like flyers out um, at the right point when it's their, the pain point, you know? So you're trying to figure out how to market without being here. Obviously when I get there, I want to, from day one, I want to spend 12 hours a day. Cause I'm coming, I'm coming about the first week of February. So I'm going to spend 12, 15 hours a day doing nothing but hitting houses with door hangers that I already have. Yeah. I, I think that's a good approach to be honest. Cause like to, to be honest, we don't even start really marketing until probably that second or third week of February. So I think you have time, like you coming in first week of Feb, getting things, you know, situated with your house and everything, and then print off some flyers within a week or two. I think that'll set you up perfectly for the timing to start like hitting the ground and the pavement. With well, the I've already got the flyers. Like I, I took your advice and used kind of copied somewhat, not, you know, when I think I bought the, the template from you on your website. I've already or I've already got a thousand. Yeah. I don't think we I don't think I we sell like any of our like flyer stuff, but like there's plenty of videos where we literally yeah. show like exactly what our flyers look like and stuff. Yeah. Um so you can definitely recreate it or whatever. But no, that's good. That's really good. So I think I think you'll be coming in just in time for the spring rush to really hit the ground running. Yeah, my goal is I think I can do a hundred K next year. And Gaylop said I could probably do way more than that. Yeah, it depends on how much uh, you pump out in the gold rush. That's that's yeah. what makes or breaks it. Seriously, those probably about eight to ten weeks, you know, from March, April, all of March, all of April, that will either unlock that or not. As far as the uh, weed and fer um, fertilizer, if I buy your course, does it show me, like I don't have the truck and all that as far as being able to do that. Is there a way to do that without all that? There is. Um, that's a good question because we just started our second location out in Salina. So we're yep. actually going through literally the same process that like someone like you would be of like just getting started. Like you don't have $8,000 to go spot, buy a spray rig, right? Yeah. Like yeah, how do yeah. you make ends meet in the beginning? And so that's actually uh, one thing I will be adding to the course here uh, soon because we're actually in the process right now of building out a full granular product uh, schedule. That's what like, I would be interested in. Yeah. Yeah. For like an eight round residential program where you can, you know, you got your pre-emergence, your fertilizers, your winterizer, and basically all your weed control that you need. Now it is, it's not a hundred percent granular because the backpacks, you do have to spray weed, yeah. right? There is yeah, liquid, yeah, yeah. but yeah. at least you can carry, you know, your two gallon jugs on that pre-mix them day prior and then bulk 90% of your application is all like the bulk of it is the fertilizer or, or really the push spreading uh, focal point of that to where you're not having to mix like a big tank. Um, I, it's not in the course yet, but it will be soon. Uh, we're still kind of fine tuning that schedule for our second location. And then once that's good, I'll publish it and like tell, you know, exactly what needs, needs, needs to be in there. Okay. Now in your course, do you... Uh... Give advice or information how to attain the, the proper licensing in the state of Texas for that. It does briefly talk about that now because you are going to be in Texas and, and I know exactly how that process is. So what you're going to need to do is go to the Texas Department of Agriculture, the website, yeah. and then you'll need to basically on the on the bottom right there, it says I need to schedule an exam. And so you'll basically click that. You'll have to fill out an application. You'll have to submit the $200 fee. So you have to submit your application, send in the $200 fee. And then after that, you just wait for them to send you like a, a like a number or whatever. And then once you get that, you can basically go take your test. And then the minute you pass the test, they send, it, they send you your ex, uh, license in a week or two. And you're ready to start treating weeds. Yeah. Is the test real hard? How long did it take you to study for it? I think I studied for it for about a month and a half, but I was very diligent about it and, you know, creating no cards, studied, you know, two, three hours a day. I did it in the winter, like now when things aren't yeah. really going on, yeah. right, just kind of right. hit the books hard. Yeah, the EDDM, I just think it would be too expensive 
and I don't know, you know, right now is probably too early to do it. Yeah, I, I would not do it now. The return on it is going to be not good at all. You want yeah. the EDDM flyers. It's extremely important to get the timing right. If you don't get yeah. the timing right, it will be horrible. And you're going to spend yeah. and waste a lot of money. Yeah. Um, you basically want to do it like when the biggest pain point is there. And so, like, to be honest, the minute the grass starts to come out of dormancy for the next six to eight weeks is the prime time. Yeah. If you can time it during that, I, I'm i telling you, you'll get calls. As long as the flyer looks somewhat professional and not like thrown together, you're going to get calls and, you know, you're, the business is definitely going to grow. I, te- I, to be honest, I don't, we didn't really do EDDM flyers, I think for the first two years. And really? I wouldn't really recommend somebody to even do EDDM flyers, maybe in their first year in business. What I like, like for us and like it, I have a different mindset than most people, right? Like I'm more of a conservative mindset. Like I don't want to yep. spend a lot of money because if I'm wrong on it, it's like going to shoot me in the foot, right? So like yep. I'd rather I'd rather test the theory first. Like even when we were first starting our business, like I didn't go out and buy a truck, buy equipment, all this stuff. It was like, no, can I even get a couple customers within a couple streets of us? Let me prove the concept first before I go put a vinyl yep. truck, on, vinyl wrap on my truck to see like, you know, if, if this business thing even works. And so the way that we approach that for the flyers is basically door hangers. And we printed out like 5,000 door hangers. And I made it a point like that spring rush to like get as many of those flyers out in those six to eight weeks manually as possible. So me, my mom, and my wife literally would go and hand out flyers for four hours, three days a week, like yeah. during the spring rush. And yeah. so- yeah. You know, just putting hundreds and hundreds of flyers out and then seeing if, oh, are we getting calls on this? And we were like we were getting calls. And so the old school guerrilla marketing. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I've even thought about hiring people to help me because I'll be by myself. But the problem with this, with that, how do you know if they're handing them out or throwing them away or whatever? You just got to trust them. And so you're going to make bad hires. You're not going to choose the right people. You're going to learn from them. They're not going to put it out as fast as you. They're not going to put it out as much as you. They could be slacking off and sitting in their truck all day. But the way that you want to incentivize them is the same way, same way that you would want to incentivize your crew. I wouldn't pay them just an hourly rate. I'd pay them an You're hourly welcome. plus every customer that books, you get an extra five bucks. So like, for example, maybe you pay them 15 bucks an hour to go hand out flyers. Okay, well, if you get, and, and you'll know, right? Because like, You'd be like, hey, I need you to take care. Like, for let's just take. There's 75, like Highway 75, runs up and down like your territory. You yeah. are gonna hand out flyers on the left side of that, and then yeah. you you have him hand it out on the right side. So any customers that book on the right side of 75, you know, came from his flyer when they say, hey, I got a flyer in the mail. And then basically you say, okay, I'll give you 15 bucks an hour, plus five dollars for every customer that books. If you do this right and you do it at the right time, there's no reason why you can't get one customer an hour sending out 80 flyers, right? Wow. There's no there's no reason. And so now he's incentivized to be like, oh, the more flyers I put out, the more that are going to book, the more I'm going to make. And so I can actually make 20 bucks an hour, maybe 25 bucks an hour if I can get two customers to book in that yeah, hour. Right, right, and so, right. you know, he'll be talking to the guy that's walking the dog. Hey man, can I give you a flyer? Like sign up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to get that extra money if he's money motivated. Yeah. So then you would just incentivize them on like production, you know, and, and that will allow you to have to not to micromanage him and be like, oh, well, is he sleeping in his car, you know, for a few hours? And maybe he does. I don't know. But then you got to just find somebody who's money motivated right. and they'll, and right. they'll, they'll crush it for you. So you think if, if I hit the ground uh, running hard enough in, in mid February, I, it wouldn't be hard to do 80 to 100 grand next year. So we are projecting at our first lo- or our second location to do, we want our goal is 120K. And no, yeah, I don't, I think that's completely doable. You just got to like, you got to work backwards, you know? Uh, so what we did is we sat down and we said, okay, if we want to do 120K, that's at least one truck with two guys in the truck, basically full-time all year. And so then we worked backwards as well. It's like, okay, well now how many flyers do we need to hand out to get those customers? Uh, We typically get a one to 3% return on our flyers if it's done right, but just run a conservative. I mean, even do a half percent. What if even only a half percent book? Um, 
And then you can start to do the math of like, okay, well, how much am I charging per cut? How many cuts are in a year? Yeah. And you yep. start to get a price. Like for us, it's 1300 bucks a customer for mowing. Well, for also us, it's also, they have to have our weed control to be on our mowing service. We don't yeah, offer mowing by like, itself. Yeah. Yeah. So right yeah. out the gate, every cus- every new customer we gain is 1800 bucks a year. If we wow. retain them for 12 months, that does not even include bush trimming, de-weeding of beds, mulch, aeration, right. none of that extra right. service. 1800 bucks a customer. And so if we need 100, 100K, how many customers do I need? Um, just, just call it 2K. Let's say if it, if it was 2K a customer, because it probably is once you add the bush trimming and the aeration service and yeah, the mulch yeah, upsells, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, well, if we want to do 120K, we need 60 customers. From the flyer perspective, I don't have, oh, I do have my calculator here. Okay, so how, how many flyers do we need to give to send out at a half percent if we run it very conservatively to get 60 customers? So we know that we need to send probably about 12,000 flyers out to get, yeah, that's a, that's perfect. So 12,000 flyers is what needs to go out in about a six to eight week period to get us our 60 customers. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it'd be 60 customers weekly in the summer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot, man. For one person, that's almost maxed out. Well, that's why. So we are when we work through that, that process, one truck, you would need two guys in the truck or yeah. your van, right? <laughs> like like you have yeah. the vehicle, you you do need somebody next to you that's helping you. But what to about hit myself? 100K. What do you think I can do by myself? You, you know? don't want to burn yourself out. So you want right. to be able to figure out a manageable workload. And that's going to be different for everybody. And the right. reason why I don't have the answer for that is there's guys on our team that can do nine budget hours, which is like 18 to 20 customers a day by themselves. But they're like studs. And then we have some team members that all can only do five budget hours. So I got a guy who does literally double what the other guy could do. And and neither one is right or wrong. And they both work extremely hard, you know? So it's just figuring out like what your max capacity is and not like overwhelming yourself. Because if there's one thing I know when you're solo, there is a point in time where you're going to get burnt out and you're going to be like, why the heck am I doing this? Like physically, you're not going to like... You're going to think to yourself, like, I can't physically keep doing this. I literally remember myself in my kitchen, like, like at that, getting to that breaking point of like, I can't keep doing this anymore. Like I got arthritis in my feet. I can't keep walking 10 miles a day, you know? And, <laughs> and, and I was a soldier. I was a paratrooper. I jumped yeah. out of airplanes. I went to right. Iraq. I'm a very physical, you know, hardcore dude and persevere through challenges, but you know, so just figuring out what your capacity is, is good. And you can kind of break it up too. If you know you're going to run it solo and you're not going to hire somebody else, maybe don't shoot for a hundred K. I think you can do, I mean, even 60 to 70 K solo, like you can kind of break it up. If it's, if you know, it's just going to be you instead of mowing five days a week, you can do like, Hey, I'm going to mow Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then at least on Tuesday and Thursday, you're not walking so much. You're maybe just trimming bushes on your hands and knees, pulling weeds. Right. You're right. kind of like breaking things up. And because if you had to walk eight miles a day, five days a week, I'd get burnt out too after a month or two or three. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Well, there's a, you know, and Mike talked about that where he shows about building a, a couple businesses in Georgia. You know, he does a franchise. You may have seen those videos and where like his guy opened up an office out of a storage unit and, uh, they were doing six hundred, eight hundred thousand dollar days, five days a week. You do the math; that's easy. Hundred, just mowing, and then you add twenty five k on the gravy services, which is mulch and stuff like that. That's and I do know a guy in San, San Antonio. You ought to look him up. It's uh, it's uh, making money mowing. He's got about fifty thousand subscribers. He's a Hispanic guy. He uh, he does ten to ten to thirteen. He's been doing it for eight eight years now, 10 to 13 yards a week a day for five days a week at average. He's averaging seven, $800 a day. If you did that, that's eight times five is what? $4,000 a week. Absolutely. And he's only working from 7 a.m. to two or two 30. He just, he says I'm done, but his route is tight. He's doing, he's doing eight to 10 houses on one street. Yeah. And equipment's going to play a factor in that too. Right. So like, we have 21 commercial push, push mower. He's using a commercial push. He does mm. the same. His and that's why I like that niche. I, that's the niche I'm going to be in. He he does that niche. You do that niche. 
it's unbelievable how much money you can make in that niche if your route's tight enough. Your route has to be tight. If you're going to start a business, why be the value guy? When you, mm-hmm. if you're doing the same thing, offer a premium service and charge a premium price, you'll make more money. You know, you, there's, there's two things that's going to move your business forward. It's hiring and sales. It's the only two things that matter. Yeah. Everything else is just a distraction, literally. You know, anytime we're sending marketing material out, we're always trying to sell for jobs too. Like, hey, we're hiring, come and work for us. And, um, you know, as we get more sales, we need more people.